Hello, you're very welcome to this webinar on writing clearly for exams. This ve webinar was developed by the Academic Writing Centre at Technological University, Dublin. It is intended for all students and all disciplines. The purpose of this webinar is to provide you with useful advice on how to write clearly in an examination setting but in order to do that, we're going to first explore and cover some context and background about examinations. This is the presentation outline. In the first place, and as a way of an introduction to the topic, we're going to provide you with a definition for examination and explore the different types of exam questions you may encounter in your exams here at TU Dublin. Our main focus is to develop your awareness on issues about writing in exams. And to that effect, we're concentrating on essay writing in exams and applying a focus on content, a focus on language and a focus on structure. We will conclude with some general considerations and resources available at the Academy Writing Centre uh, webpage. At this point in your academic life, you're probably quite aware of what an examination is. Also, exams or tests are not confined to school or college. Think, for example, of a driving test and its two main components of theory and practice. I'm sure there are other examples of tests or examinations in normal everyday life you can think of. It is useful, nonetheless, to read this definition from the Oxford Dictionary. As you can read, an examination is a formal written, spoken or practical test, especially in school or college, to see how much you know about a subject or what skills or what you can do. What skills, such as playing an instrument, carrying out a lab experiment or presenting a, pro a project in a foreign language, you have acquired in your study. Throughout this presentation, we are focusing more particularly on written examinations at university level. And this, in this specific context, a written examination assesses the knowledge you have acquired in a particular discipline or area of knowledge, and also a range of competencies, such as critical thinking and analytical skills. Knowledge relates to the content, to facts, information, theories. But in college, uh, in exams, you are also required to demonstrate that you have developed the ability to articulate your own ideas on the, on the knowledge you have acquired. In an exam, you may be asked to apply a particular theory to a specific setting or to outline the advantages or disadvantages of a concept. It is advisable that in the first place you inform yourself as to the assessment method or methods for your program of study and for each of the modules in your current year of study. You can then see how marks are distributed between coursework, continuous assessment, and end of year or semester examination. Is the overall mark allocated on a 50-50 basis between continuous assessment and end of year examination, or is it a split of 40-60? More particularly, it is a good idea to review past exam papers for the different modules and to check out the structure of the paper, number of questions, type of questions, etc. Also, if you review past exam papers, you may be able to identify whether there are some themes or topics that appear in exam questions every year. Finally, it is of, of great benefit to practice completing past exam papers within the allocated time for the exam, as it would reveal your strengths and perhaps also challenges you may face under exam conditions. Now that we know what an examination is and what it entails, it is important to reflect on what type of questions may appear in your exams. In the next few slides, we're going to look at multiple choice questions, short answer questions, and finally, essay questions. 
Multiple choice questions assess discrete knowledge, content knowledge related to a fact, date, calculation. Um, multiple choice questions, as its name indicates, presents you with usually four or five possible answers to a question, but only one answer is correct. You have to Select the correct answer to get the marks allocated to the questions. You should also be aware that on occasions, multiple choice questions may carry negative marker marking if answered incorrectly. Short answer questions uh, in, uh, require a short answer. This type of questions, as you can see in this slide and in the following one, often start with an instruction to the student to define, to explain, to provide an example, to explain a connection between two ideas or concepts, or to list. I encourage you to read the, key, the keywords and the brief explanation. This will allow you to develop an awareness and an understanding on how to address and answer short answer questions correctly. This is a continuation on uh, uh, short answer questions and you can see additional instruction words. I would like to emphasize the importance of reading the instruction word to develop your answer uh, accordingly. In this slide, you can see a number of tips and suggestions on how to answer multiple choice questions and short answer questions. In the first place, in an exam situation, it is of the utmost importance to manage your time efficiently and smartly. Find out what marks are allocated to each question and decide how long you're going to de dedicate to each question in turn. With particular reference to multiple choice questions and short answer questions, Attempt to answer all questions, but start with the questions you're certain of and leave the questions you're not so sure about to the end. Do not waste time by rewriting your question in full. Write the question number instead. Above all, plan your time and stick to it. From this slide onwards, we are concentrating more specifically on essay questions in exams. As you can see in this slide and also see in the next slide, essay questions often start with an instruction to do one of the following, compare, contrast, discuss or consider, examine, explore, describe, etc. Each of the instruction uh, verbs mean something very specific and you are expected to carry out that as instruction in relation to a theme or a topic in your discipline. For example, if you're asked to compare, you're expected to highlight similarities between concepts or ideas. Or if you're asked to summarize, you are required to show an in-depth understanding of the topic and to distill the main ideas or co concepts and include them in your essay. As you can see, this slide presents some additional instructions for instruction words for you to consider and understand. And it's understanding the instruction word fully will allow you to plan the content of your answer in a comprehensive manner. I encourage you once more to spend time reading uh, these instructions and their meaning so that you're better prepared to answer essay exam questions effectively. When you review past exam papers, you can highlight the instruction word for each of the question in the uh, each of the questions in the paper and plan your answer accor accordingly. This is uh, a slide on tips and suggestions on uh, how to deal with essay questions in an exam. First of all. Uh, and I'm sure you have heard your lecturers or teachers express this view before, read the questions carefully and make sure you're clear as to what the question is asking of you. Reflect on the instruction uh, verb and also the context and background for the topic in question. 
before you start uh, writing, uh, spend some time planning your answer. What keywords, facts, theories are essential for you to include in your answer? What structure um, are you going to adopt to write your essay? Allocate time to complete the question in full and allow time for planning, writing and revising. Write neatly and in clear paragraphs. Proofread as you go along. It is a good idea to leave a few lines free between paragraphs so that perhaps you can include some additional points on the key topic of the paragraph at a later stage. If you're running out of time, it is a good idea to jot down a few points, even if you're not able to develop them in detail, because when the examiner is correct in your paper, he or she will see that you know more about the topic. We're now moving to looking and applying a focus on content in relation to writing uh, an essay in uh, an examination. And uh, over the next few slides, we're going to develop our understanding on the importance of focusing on content in preparing for the exam and also during the exam itself. As discussed before, an examination is a formal test on the knowledge uh, and proficiency you have developed on the discipline you're studying. Knowledge relates directly to information, facts, topics and themes, theories and concepts that are central to your discipline. An ex examination tests your understanding of knowledge and allows you to show you have acquired the knowledge of the discipline. In relation to acquiring knowledge and contents, how do we go about preparing for the exam? This connects directly to study techniques, and you may find that some of the suggestions contained in this slide are techniques you already apply and use successfully, while others may be new to you. It is important to manage study time during the semester and thus avoid last minute exam panic and related anxiety. Remember that to acquire new knowledge, you need to engage with the subject throughout the course. As you possibly know, cramming before the exam does not work and leaves you unprepared for the challenge of college exams. Develop your own system to learn new material by making your own study notes, exploring thematic patterns, creating a, glor a glossary with new terms in your discipline, or paraphrasing the fundamental concepts explored during the, con the course. All of these strategies allow you to acquire new knowledge. It may also be useful to get to set up a study group and harness the different strengths and competencies of members of the group. Finally, as mentioned before, complete past examination papers in your module within a specific time allocation or make up your own exam questions on the material you are learning. So um, we're now focusing on content during uh, the exam. First of all, as we have uh, uh, said before uh, and emphasized throughout this presentation, it is important that you uh, read the question carefully. Ask yourself, what is the question asking? What content, information, ideas are necessary to include? Develop a plan for your answer. How are you going to se sequence the information you're planning to include? What is essential to include in the answer? Jot down the key ideas, concepts, theories, authors, etc. Perhaps it would be useful to create a mind map with your ideas or a list of points that you're going to include. We're now moving to a focus on language and writing in exams is academic writing and as such it uses language with specific features and the features of academic language are that the language is formal, is objective, discipline specific, grammatically correct and it uses clear sentences and well-developed paragraphs. 
You can find more about uh, academic language uh, in the link uh, below. So, as we were saying, it is important to use short and clear sentences as uh, they convey clear meaning on the idea or concept you're exploring in your essay question. Uh, use discipline-specific vocabulary that rel relates directly to the topic in the essay question. Um, words, as you possibly know, encapsulate knowledge and convey meaning. So what are the words and the vocabulary of your discipline that you need to use? Formal language does not use uh, contractions as a, such as is, isn't, aren't or colloquial words such as stuff or things. The exercise below um, presents you with two options to complete uh, each sentence and asks you to decide which option is more suitable in an academic paper. You may read each sentence in turn and decide what option is more academic in nature. I have highlighted in bold the correct answer. For, for example, in number one, the correct option is an integral part of, it is more academic, that's just saying really important. If you practice essay, uh, if you practice writing essay type questions, you will develop an, an awareness about what is appropriate in terms of language and you will be better prepared for writing under exam conditions. We are moving now to a focus on structure, on what structure are we going to uh, apply to the essay. So this slide provides you with information about the structure of an essay. First of all, in the introduction, you are expected to link back to the question and to provide an outline as to how you're going to answer the question, what elements you're going to include, in what order. The body of the essay allows you to develop each of the elements in turn. It is essential to use paragraphs, and as you possibly know, each paragraph is constructed around a single idea which is then explained, elaborated upon, illustrated, we will see more about paragraphs uh, in the slides ahead. For the moment, think that paragraphs should not be too short or too long. Connect your paragraphs by using transition words or phrases such as in addition to, on the other hand. Finally, in the conclusion, you highlight the main points you have included, thus providing a summary to the ideas explored. In simple language, you can think of the introduction as an opportunity to tell your reader, in this case, the examiner, what you're going to discuss in your essay. In the body of the essay, you discuss the different elements in detail, and in the conclusion, you summarize. In other words, we could say that the in the introduction, you tell them or what you're going to tell them. In the body, you tell them. And in the conclusion, you tell them what you have told them. We have highlighted the importance of writing in paragraphs. And this graphic provides you with a visual representation as to, this, to the structure of a paragraph. It starts with the topic sentence, which is then explained and elaborated upon. And it also includes some evidence on the topic or point of the paragraph. This is an academic writing uh, paragraph sample extracted uh, from a book by Swales and Feek uh, on academic writing for graduate students. It may be difficult to achieve this level of clarity uh, writing under exam conditions, but it serves as a reminder to structure content in clear paragraphs that contain and explore a single idea. This slide contains another illustration for a paragraph structure and template and highlights once more the importance of the topic sentence at the start of the paragraph. We're coming to the end of this uh, webinar.
and uh, it is relevant to point you to uh, your attention to these internet links. First of all, um, it is important you read and understand uh, the TU Dublin General Assessment Regulations as they contain, contain all relevant information on examinations at the university. Secondly, some students find that exam time can be a source of anxiety and stress, and you may find the resources available in this link useful, and I encourage you to explore them uh, in your own time. Finally, University of Leinster offers interesting resources for preparing for exams and revision and study techniques, and you may look at them in more detail in your own time. Um, in this slide, you can see the references uh, used uh, in preparing this webinar. And finally, in conclusion, um, we have uh, throughout the seminar explored examinations and exam question types and provided you with advice on how to answer various types of exam questions. We focus more specifically on issues about writing and developing an extended, uh, extended answer in an essay type question. As a reminder, it is important to keep in mind that writing is a key competence in higher education and that written examinations continue to be one of the most widely used forms of testing students' content knowledge and competence in critical thinking. As a take home message, Check past examination papers and practice answering um, essay type questions under time constraints. This practice will stand for you when you're writing under exam conditions. Thank you for your attention. I hope this uh, presentation um, is useful to you. Uh, you may wish to visit our website. You can see the address there and you may find uh, additional uh, resources, activities and events or materials for your uh, use. So once more, thank you for your attention and uh, hope to see you at the Academic Writing Centre.